Thank you, Buckle. It's <laughs> my third attempt and I keep yawning. Hi, it's Mary. Welcome to another video. It's Halloween 2020 and this year I wanted to do something special. We are huge Lord of the Rings fans in this house. We watch the movies, God, about eight times a year and obviously love the extended editions. And one of the things I love most about the extended edition of Return of the King is that we get to meet the Mouth of Sauron character. And months ago, I thought to myself, what an awesome thing to be able to turn myself into for this Halloween. All the materials I'm going to be working with I've used before, but I haven't really sat down and properly come out with a plan. So I'm just going to take you with me on that journey and let's see how we get on. I'm not going for cosplay level of accuracy here. Just if that's what you're looking for, don't watch this video because parts of this are slightly chaotic and doing things on the fly. But it's all just a bit of fun. It's a big challenge. Um, I've never done so in depth a costume before, um, so I'm looking forward to, to the challenge. So let's Let's go, let's see how I get on. So I'm going to just talk you through my thought process when kind of designing the sleeves that um, are shown on the Mouth of Sauron character. Now it looks like he's wearing a robe with a surcoat on top but I'm just going to make it one garment so the sleeves will attach to the kind of black surcoat. Now if you look at the video you can see that the sleeves are quite bulbous at the top and they're made with several panels and the seams look like they're kind of external exposed seams. So that's what I'm, I've decided to do is make it with seven different panels. Now I measured from the top of my shoulder and gave myself a little bit of extra so if I need to trim it when I attach it I can do. But when it kind of tapers in near the elbow it looks like it's fitted and then bunched up a little bit to give it a little bit more volume. So what I've done is measured from the top of my shoulder to my elbow and then added a couple of inches Inches. and then I've tapered that piece in so that it just makes the whole, whole construction of the sleeve a little bit simpler. So it tapers in here, this measurement is a seventh of the bit just by my elbow, the kind of fattest part of my forearm if you will. So when they're stitched together that should then fit in. I've given myself a bit of extra because it's obviously better if it's too big and then I can take it in rather than being too small so hopefully it'll be all right. It doesn't need a huge amount of seam allowance because they're sewn together quite closely and then they'll be on the outside so it should be fine. Then it kind of carries on down to the wrist and I've tapered it again because obviously this part of my arm is thinner than this part. So the whole piece together looks like a cricket bat and this is just obviously measurements for my arm. So the way that you could do it is just follow the same process, just measure from your arm down to your elbow, then from your elbow to your wrist and then measure the circumference of your wrist and this bit here the top of your forearm so hopefully that will work I'm not going to bother making a mock-up um, life on the edge um, I have this fabric that I got from the remnants box at my local fabric store so it was really inexpensive it was only a pound a meter so I should have plenty of this so I'm going to cut out seven of these for each sleeve and then stitch them together and hopefully it will fit I've just finished the first sleeve um, not attached yet I just tried it on and it was a little bit tight on the forearm and also I'd forgotten to allow for the fact it's going to need um, a gore underneath the arm so for one just final eighth panel I've just used the same basic shape but I've just made the forearm bit a bit fatter and then I've just kind of made a triangular gore shape for the back so that will be the underneath panel and that will mean I can actually move my arm once it's attached um, obviously need to tidy up these frayed ends but um, it's looking okay so far so fingers crossed I'll get on with the other sleeve <laughs> so 
some of the sleeves are done um, I ended up turning them inside out and running along all of those seams so you've kind of got the, the raised up bit that I was looking for they, they do fit snugly here and all below there the inside is fraying so bad that it reminds me of you know, if you go swimming in the sea or in the lake and suddenly your feet end up getting tangled in slimy weed putting your hand inside these sleeves feels like that because of all the threads but hey ho it's for a fancy dress costume it will be fine <laughs> so next I need to work on the the kind of big black surcoat bit and figure out how I'm going to get the sleeves into it the end of day one of making the, the kind of robes and I'm absolutely exhausted um, I need to stop for today the sleeves are done um, that, that they've turned out okay in the end and it's, uh, they're not exactly how I intended to make them but they've worked out fine even if it does feel like your hands are being covered in eels when you try it on Um, yeah, guys, don't ever buy upholstery chenille to do these sorts of projects because, boy, you should see the state of the floor in here. I've done the kind of main part of the surcoat. Sorry, my cat is ready for cuddle time. Um, I've basically just made two straight pieces with a, a slit at the front and I've edged everything to try and reduce the fraying. I'm going to have to take the shoulders in quite a lot um, because in order to have the sleeves poking out it needs to be a bit narrower but then if I do that to be able to get the shape right for the rest of it I'm not going to be able to get the sleeves in and be able to get it all on and off in one go so I've changed my plan again <laughs> so my mum is an excellent seamstress she would be horrified watching the process I've gone through doing this I've been winging it to quite a large extent so what I'm going to do is actually use an old vest I've got a really really old grey vest that I've been using as a pyjama top and it's, it's, it's fit for the bin to be honest with you and the sleeves will actually fit in the armholes of this vest and it's grey so I'm actually going to do that and I think it will sit better because these are supposed to be two separate garments and when I used to do medieval reenactment they would always be a shift dress underneath a, a kind of top robe or dress type of thing um, for today I'm done, I'm just too tired, <laughs> my brain hurts and I'm uh, not relishing the prospect of hoovering up all these threads but um, yeah I'm bringing you along on my kind of winging it thought process just for fun really I wasn't intending for this to be an actual tutorial because I don't think anybody would actually work in this way if given the choice but there we go okay I'll join you again tomorrow when I do the sleeves and finish off this little surcoat thing Okay, day two of putting the robes together. I've had some sleep. Apparently I'm so unfit that cutting out a few panels means that I can't walk today. <laughs> All my hamstrings and my glutes are just so tight. Um, but yeah, I think I was freaking out a bit last night, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it shouldn't take too long to, to finish off what I need to do today. I think I'm going to leave the sides of the, the surcoat a bit open because it'll just be easier to get on and off, particularly once I've got the prosthetic in place for the face. So sleeves onto my old vest, just hem the surcoat, put some buttons on, trim the armholes of that and get that sewn. Then that should be it for the, the garments. Still have a load to do on the prosthetic and helmet and stuff, but one step at a time. <laughs> sleeves are on it worked doesn't bear to look closely but does the job it's exactly what I wanted it to do onto the surcoat
the costume. So the sleeves are on the vest and that actually worked out. You can see this vest is so old and thin but it works really well and this fabric is so hot that I need something thin underneath the main robes. I managed to find some buttons that I thought would work really well on this. He kind of looks like on the picture that he's wearing something that's a little bit more wooden but I quite liked these. Um, so I stitched those on and just used a shoelace um, to make some loops and I sandwiched that in between um, two panels. I've also gone around and basted all of the raw edges because the sleeves are driving me insane with all the weird thick fray bits. But yeah, that's done. It's not quite sitting right across the shoulders, but as I say, I'm not going for cosplay here. This is going to probably be a worn once for Halloween and that'll be it. It'll end up in the loft probably. So yeah, that's that bit done. I've now got a lot of work to do on um, the whole helmet and the prosthetic. So wish me luck. <laughs> process that I'm following for making the, the kind of face armour. I used, um, I've got a face cast here with the prosthetic for the teeth which I haven't finished yet but I've used that as a kind of guide for the size. I'm using A4 foam sheets and hopefully that will be strong enough but what I've done is I've used the reference photographs and I've really carefully kind of made um, a design which is made up of four different layers so I've cut them all out on paper so these kind of mould around the mouth and then there's the kind of sticky up bits at the top as well. So I'm going to cut those out of black foam and I'm going to use the hairdryer to try and mould them slightly so that they've got the contours that um, cover the face and then kind of stipple them with um, silver paint. So fingers crossed that will work. a week since I made the eel sleeves. Um, I've done a little bit of work on the helmet um, which is pretty much done except for the runes that need to go around the edges here. So we've looked through the Lord of the Rings book and I've got the accurate runes and I have a photo to work from to make sure that I've got those done. Once they're on that's pretty much done. Alongside that I've also um, kind of been painting the prosthetic now originally I made this because it's a liquid latex paste prosthetic which was made just by using liquid latex and flour and this is a face cast of myself and I was going to wear it as a prosthetic but I think it's going to be really claustrophobic and I just, sorry my cat's here, what my husband suggested doing is actually once we remove that is actually gluing the mouthpiece actually to the helmet. I've made it so it fits snugly because that's kind of how it looks. The helmet looks integrated with his face if you watch the, the video. So I might do that. I think that might work and then I can just make sure that um, my face is, my chin's painted white so it kind of blends in. In With regards to the eyes, I was going to cut eye holes in this but I've decided I quite like the paint job on it and I don't want to spoil it. It'll end up looking like a Cyberman if um, I end up doing that. So sorry I've, I've got a bowl of flour here to dust the latex so it doesn't stick to itself when I peel that off and my cat is eating it a strange animal anyway I'm quite happy with how this looks and I really don't want to spoil it by um, putting black holes in it so 
once it's attached to the band which is going to kind of sit on my forehead it's going to be one of those bands that you can put protective face shields onto then that way I can kind of lift it up when I need to see and then just pop it back down again so I won't be able to see while the mask is down but I quite like this and I've spent ages trying to get the highlights and shadows on it to look like it's three dimensional so I don't want to spoil it um what else do I need to do I need to make the kind of hood and if you look at the pictures the hood is sort of attached to these points but because this is a little bit flatter than the original will be what original was on the actor what I'm probably going to do is make a very loose kind of cowl now I've got a grey hoodie here and I was going to use the, the hood just to kind of get a basic shape and make it quite a lot bigger I've got some lightweight fabric because this is at the end of the day only made out of expanding foam so it's not going to take the weight of fabric that I made the, the kind of circuit out of so if I'm going to do that and once I've got this mounted onto the thing that's going to stick to my head then I will make some small holes in this and kind of hook them over here and I'll make sure it's got plenty of room under the chin so when I lift the mask up to see what I'm doing I'll still have enough room and I can just pop it down and up again without having to mess around getting them lined up. So I'm probably going to do that. The other thing I've done as well is make this out of hot glue. It's just if you watch the video I think it's a cord that's attached to his hood and I've just made it with hot glue and then painted it with different shades of silver and some metallic nail varnishes and stuff and I got some of this kind of beady cord stuff just to kind of hang that around my neck as well so once these bits are done that will be the costume finished so there isn't really a lot left to do now so fingers crossed it's all going to look okay <laughs> But I haven't tied it in not too near, so if I want to uh, bring the buckle, <laughs> it's my third attempt, and I keep yawning. Yeah, so basically the buckle, the um, cord, the hood <laughs> are all finished. <laughs> Between yawning and the cat, I'm just never going to get this piece done, so I'm just going to stop trying. Um, you get the idea. I'll finish the mask and the face piece and the headband and then I'll talk to you again.
from the grave. Bids thee welcome. Old Greybeard, I have a talk and I was doing to show you. Halloween is in autumn because this costume is hot. <laughs> I'll be kind of hanging around outside on Halloween because obviously with social distancing in place we don't want people kind of knocking door to door so I will be hanging around outside so thankfully this is a very warm costume. I'm very pleased with how this turned out. There are a few things I would probably do differently. I was disappointed I couldn't get the the foam to kind of 3D mould very well when I tried using heat um, so I guess I could have persevered a bit more with that but actually I think the paint on it looks good enough and this is only going to be seen from a distance. Obviously the prosthetic turned out not to be a prosthetic so if I had known that I would have still made it out of liquid latex but I would have done it slightly differently. Currently it's moulded to fit my face but is then having to be glued onto a chin piece that is straight and the mask is quite straight so it's um the glue is fighting to come unstuck in a few places but no i think it'll work okay um everything else you know given that it was fabric from remnants boxes and i didn't have a pattern i was just winging it as i went along i think it came out okay in the end and as i say on halloween it's only going to be seen from a distance so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a big thumbs up please don't be cross at me for dissing lord of the rings because i love lord of the rings and i wanted to do a good job of this and i know it's not cosplay level of accuracy but i even went to the trouble of finding the runes so that they were correct so i have tried to get the detail correct with this so i hope you enjoyed the video have a really happy halloween stay safe everybody and i'll see you on the next video okay <laughs> you forgot the line again? Yeah. <laughs>